Hi everybody, I'm Mike McCrory and this is Would You Make It? I've made a chessboard that's going to be a wedding gift for a young couple. And I've already made the chessboard and I've made the frame pieces. So this video is going to focus on engraving some logos, inlaying their names and putting it all together. So let's get started. The bride graduated from the University of Richmond. So I'm gonna start by carving the logo for the school. The logo is a two color logo, so I'm going to start by mixing up some red epoxy and I'll do this in two passes. It's not a bright red, so I'm mixing in one drop of violet dye to help darken the tone. The next day, after the epoxy had cured, I carved the remaining part of the logo, which is a dark blue color. I had already cut the groove in the frame that fits over the plywood of the chessboard. I didn't realize that the CNC would carve deeply enough and create an opening, so I had to cover that up with tape. If I was doing this again, I would set the CNC not to carve so deeply. The groom graduated from the West Point Military Academy, so now I'm carving the logo for that school. The West Point logo is a single color, it's only black. But the black dye has a tendency to bleed into the maple wood grain, so I'm putting on a coat of shellac first to help minimize the amount of bleed.
The bride's name is Emmy, so now I'm carving her name. And then I'll carve the groom's name, which is Cam. The names are going to be inlaid with walnut, so now I'm carving the male portion of the inlay. A lot of people are not fans of CNC routers because it's not a traditional woodworking machine, and I was in that category as well, but it's really advanced my capabilities. I bought this Laguna IQ series CNC router out of necessity because of the amount of algebraic notation and engravings that I was doing on chessboards, and it's really increased my efficiency in doing that type of work. But for something like this inlay, where I'm inlaying their names, I wouldn't be able to do that by hand at all. After carving this, I saw there were a couple places where the walnut had broken away, so I carved another one just as a backup. I'll use the bandsaw to cut the excess wood away, and then I'll glue them in place. And now it's time for the reveal. I'll cut the excess wood off with a bandsaw, and then I'll run everything through the sander. I'm running all four frame pieces through the sander at the same time because I want them all to be exactly the same thickness. And now I'll fit the frame pieces onto the chessboard, and you can see how that groove fits over a half inch piece of plywood that's sticking out around the perimeter. The chessboard squares are made from walnut and curly maple, and they're two and a quarter inches.
Next, with my spline jig on the table saw, I will cut the slots for the corner splines. The bottom of the chessboard is not flush with the bottom of the frame, so I have these thin pieces of wood that act as spacers so that the chessboard remains vertical when I clamp it to the jig. I'll run the walnut through the drum sander to get it to the exact thickness that I need to fit into the slots. After the glue has dried, I'll use my flush trim saw to cut off the splines on two sides of the chessboard, and then I'll run it through the table saw to clean everything up. The last big operation is to bevel the bottom of the frame, and I have my blade set at about a 10 degree angle. After running it through the table saw, I just have to sand out some of the burn marks that were left by the blade.
For the finish, I'll start with a coat of de-waxed shellac and let that dry. And that gives it a nice color and helps to raise the grain a little bit so that I can sand it one more time before applying the lacquer. I didn't realize it until it was too late, but I had run out of the pre-catalyzed lacquer that I normally use, and the place where I buy it closes early on Friday afternoon and it's not open again until Monday. But because this is a wedding gift, I had to get it finished that weekend. So I'm just using lacquer from a spray can, which will still leave a nice finish. So I gotta ask, would you make it?